Hi, Tony here for Lightwave Digital. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking about the basics of Lightwave. Now, the first tutorial I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the modeler. And I'm also going to talk about how you navigate around modeler. That in turn will bring you through to layout, which is where you actually animate and render your actual scene. So, to start off with, I've got a scene here with this basic wooden train and that's our aim for this series of tutorials. So I'm going to do four or five tutorials, a lot of them explaining certain stuff. But to become good at modelling, really you need to know the tools and where they are. So what I'll do is slowly but surely show you where these tools are and how to use them and just how to navigate basically around Lightwave. So like this scene here is our end result which is down the line so and it's in layout so let me just get rid of that and then we've got this so this is the actual scene in modeler that I've modeled now with Lightwave you get the four panels and one of the panels is your perspective view and at each corner right hand corner you can see here look you've got these little icons. So one, as you click, and then holding click, your left click, you can drag side to side, up and down for moving. The next is to rotate. And remember, this is your 3D perspective view, so there isn't no rotating flat views. You've got your zoom in and out, and then you've got a maximize and minimize button. And they're in all the actual corners and you can change these windows if you want but this is traditionally the most popular way you would model with the four windows uh, also in the top corner here look i've got the name of the project and you can have multiple projects open and these little squares here with the dot in the corner are the layers and over here on your left when you you'll see a layers option and when I click it it opens up those layers <coughs> so as I click on the top layer it will show you the bottom part of the train and as I go through you can on each layer by simply clicking each section now if I wanted them all on you could just click where it says foreground at the very top look and it will bring them up or if I just wanted, let's say, this base here, but I wanted everything else in the background, there's a little B for background, this will put it in the background, but they're not editable. They're just showing you where they are. Now, other things you could do is if you hold, uh, well, in this case, if you just click through them one by one, they'll be selected. Or you can start, deselecting and putting them in the background if you right mouse click on an on a tick it will go green that basically means you've locked it so no matter what you do where you go they're always going to be there and to unlock them you just simply re right mouse click on them and it works in the same way with uh, layers in your foreground here look so now no matter what I do, they'll stay on unless I right mouse click on them with the layers. And you can drag and drop these layers around and move them in order if you want and so on. <clears throat> now, another thing is if you want to rename or name a layer, you simply double click on it and it will bring up the name. And this is where you just name it. It's really important you name all your layers because once you get lots and lots of layers, all it will be called is like Untitled 1, Untitled 2, Untitled 3, and so on. And then before you know it, you've, you're going through to animate stuff, and everything's called Untitled, so it's hard to know which is which to select. So naming your layers is very important. Now the model itself, which we'll do, we're going to model this in another tutorial, is made to roughly the scale. I think it's about 18, 19 centimetres by about... 14 centimeters high something like that so I've, it's always really important to to model whatever you're making to real real life sizes so that's basics i mean we're going to look more in layers and so on so other things in each window you've got the option to how you're going to view 
the model so currently I've got it on textured wire because I like to see the texture and I like to see how the models made up with the polygons and uh, edges but you can actually switch to various options here throughout which is completely up to you you can just have a texture one on if you want and that's up to you for whatever reason you want to have a look at stuff but we'll get into that again and you've got the option of what you want this window to be so it is a perspective window but if I wanted it to be the right window or the bottom window I could do but obviously I always like to have a perspective window the perspective window really is for selecting and for uh, viewing you don't move stuff around in here you don't kind of <coughs> rotate or anything like that because you're doing it in perspective view so you're not getting a true uh, view of where it's actually moving to you always do it in these windows so let's for let's go on to uh let's say while we're on here still let's go to wheels and we'll put everything else in the background now all these on i've put them all on one layer you could have them on separate layers so over here we're going to the tabs now You've got all these different tabs with lots and lots of tools. The create is basic objects that you will then create on different layers. Or you can have them all on the same layers like these. You can still select them. And what you then is start manipulate them. I mean, there's a lot more to it. But so this is these are just basic objects that you would start with. And under more, there's even more. But to manipulate them you start off with a modifier so you've got move so if i click move and now when i'm moving like i said don't you don't do it in your perspective view you do it in your top and your right so if i was going to move these out to here like so i can see in these views where it is so now i wanted to let's say i wanted to put them at the front here look i'm looking in my top view my side views and i'm looking where i want it to go okay now simple uh option is control and z undoes what you've done other options is rotate and again currently at the bottom here if i you've got these got the action centers now this 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 kind of makes the rotate work or objects work on in different ways so for the mouse wherever i click on the screen so if i was to click here it rotates around that mouse icon if i was to select here on this it rotates from here like so now if you wanted them to individually rotate you would go to local which is local to each object and then you can rotate them individually like so and basically each one works slightly different so the pivot the pivot is the center point of where this is going to rotate in layout. So, for instance, if you was going to animate this train, the wheels, these wheels ideally would be on their own layer. And the pivot point is the center point of where you want the object to rotate, which in here, it would be the center of the wheel. So, because it rotates around the center. Uh, and so, with the other uh, parts, they don't really... I would definitely center the pivots for each one, which again is just under layer. You got pivot. When you go on pivot, you get this little cross here, and you just basically choose where you want it to rotate around, or you can just center it. Now, the reason you do this is because when you go into layout and you use the move tool in layout, the move tool is attached to where the pivot point is. So if your pivot point is on the ground here and you move in, say, the top, you're going to have to move it here to get the top to move. So it's just a bit awkward. So I would always position your pivot points, which is the rotational center of each object, into the right position. Okay? So going on to the next. Now, I've just, I am skipping through this. Uh, because what I want to do is not go through everything but get to a point in the next tutorial where we can just make some basic objects and use the move tools and rotate tools and again there's all different tools to help you move and manipulate the actual object you're on so they've got size as well so if you wanted to size something you could now with the size because I'm on local it does the center points the holes and the outside separately so mouse is always the best one I like to 
and so on. Now, the textures are just what's called planar textures, which we'll get into in the next tutorial. They're not UVs. So you've got the transform, which lets you, it gives you a mixture of kind of move, rotate, size, scale, all in one. Then you've got the stretch tool, and there's lots of other tools as well. So this is to manipulate the object you're on. And then you've got other options as well, which we're going to go through in other tutorials, but just so I don't bombard you with so much stuff. Each one of these tabs have different options that will help you in your modeling journey. Now, if I just turn everything on, now what I've done is I've also put this ground plane down. I've put a ground plane down because what I wanted to just basically use it as is uh, an object to cast a shadow when I take it through. Otherwise, it will just be floating in midair. So, but again, we'll go through that as well. And then, like I said, I've given every single object a name and each object has its own surface and over the, over the, over the, on the side here there's a surface editor when i open it it will show you each of the objects surfaces like so so for instance the engine bit here if i was to say let me just show you how it's attached so the luminous to make it if i turn this up you can see it's got its own individual editing options because it's got its own surface name. Again, we're going to do this in another tutorial so you're not overloaded with it. But when you first go into Lightwave, before you do anything, I open Lightwave up and I create what's called a contents directory. A contents directory is a way of looking after all your files in the same place. So here's a folder that I've got for this scene. I've got images, and in the images, any images you use to texture, you put in here. And when you put them in here, it's important that you're happy with the names, because if I was to use this Ash architecture here, and then rename it in here after I've used it, Lightwave will not be able to find it because you've changed the name. It's a little bit like when you're doing web design. You've got a HTML folder and you've got an image folder where those images are on your HTML. But if you move them out of that folder or you rename them, the HTML programming cannot see it. So it's really important you're happy with the names and you're not going to move the names or move these images out of here. And as you go, you can carry on adding images in here. When you've modeled something, you save the model in an object folder so you've got I've got my train model and attached to that model is all the textures I've shown you about so they go in here and then when you take it through to the layout which we'll do in the next tutorial you'll know you then save the scene and the scene will have all the objects so it might be that I've got five different trains and they'll all be listed here but they'll all be in my scene folder now on top of that I've got a few others. So I've got a test render. So this one here is the example of I found on Google. So it's just a little toy train. And then what I did is I did a test render. And here's the test render. So here's the example. Here's a test render. Test render. I'd say that the colours need to be a bit darker on mine. But I think I've not done a bad job to be honest. It's slightly hard to tell if you didn't know which one was which which is the real one maybe, but that's what you're going to end up going to. So I've got a reference image as well, and when I made the train, I literally broke it down into its very basic form and then ba made these basic f objects on their own layers. The, the last thing I've got is I've just got this. This is something it's called a surface ID, and the reason I've, I've got this is because I use it to select as a selection option in Photoshop to select each texture and I can change the colours in there. But again, this will be another tutorial. But what you might have, if you might have a folder that says renders and all your renders go in it, if you're doing uh, UV or UV maps, you might have a map for, and uh, sorry, a folder for UV maps, you might have a reference uh, folder, so all reference images and so on. And this grows to rig in and effects and you can have lots more, but... I would say it's really important and probably the most important things to have this system. And when you first open uh, Lightwave and you've got a blank scene, what you need to do is go to load, set the contents directory, choose the folder of the morning and press OK. And then you've told Lightwave, this is my folder system I'm working from. And then you just carry on working. It's S on your keyboard to save. And I know this is 
I've bombarded you quite a, quite a bit of information, if you, especially if you're new. But just take your time. In the next tutorial, what I'm going to do is show you how to make basic objects. And we'll start constructing this train bit by bit. So, again, zipped through all this really quickly. But my suggestion is, take your time. Listen to what I'm saying carefully. And look out for my next tutorial. Which is going to be, let's start creating this basic train. Thanks for listening.